Today we're going to be looking at a random piece of conservative propaganda that a conservative friend of mine posted as though it was an actual video on painting. <clears throat> yeah, I should probably stop coughing during that interest line. I'm pretty sure it's discernible. Um, that's okay. All right. Uh, so I want my already watched like a minute and a half of this, two minutes of it, and I thought it would be fun to just kind of like, kind of like go over it. Um, <sighs> so this is a really great thing how you can just like mask like propaganda as comedy, which is supposed to like make you, uh, you know, devoid of criticism. Like, oh, well, it's just memes, you know. Um, but like, I, I watched like two minutes of this, and it's like this isn't even funny unless you're like bought entirely into a conservative narrative, and you're like, oh, oh hypocrisy, ha oh, oh. Um, is like the only way I can really see it being funny. Let's see. I wonder if they like mu this music. Oh, that's not interesting. I'm trying to get centrists to come to come like explain to me why they're not insane, um, <clears throat> or why their position is reasonable. I guess you know, we charitable there. All right, let's uh, let's start this out big. Let's put hey out one point two five. I'd like to welcome you back to a, another episode that. of How to Paint Like a Feminist. If you're a Democrat and this is your first time joining us, I'd like to invite you to take a break from burning down your cities and beating up old people and. That's what Democrats are doing, man. We're just burning down our cities and beating up old people, despite there only being like, I think it's less than a billion dollars in damage so far over like, I don't know what, not six months of sustained protests. Like for comparison, like the Rodney King riots took place over like what, like a week or something? Uh, less than a week um, and did over a billion dollars in damage in one city at one point in time. Is it, let's say damage, where's the damage on this? I cannot go do this much fact checking on all of this, but I just want to just demonstrate how stupid this is. <clears throat> Although I'll say that's the last time I checked, it was like half a billion in damages. It could be a little bit more at this point, um, but probably not much more because we really haven't heard too much about it. Um, but whatever, suffice to say, he's just trying to like shit talk the average like, like oh Democrats just burned down their city. It's like, I mean no, they're all fine. Like my family is in New York and California, and those cities are fine. There's some protests. Occasionally some shit gets damaged. But it's okay. Give it a watch. Soon the air's gonna be filled with lots of screaming at the sky again. Oh boy. Before we get started on this mask. Wait, so what's that supposed to be a reference? Air's gonna be filled with lots down your cities and beating up old people and pull up a chair. And give it a watch. Soon the air's gonna be filled with lots of screaming at the sky again. I wonder what that's supposed to mean, the screaming at the sky again thing. Like, this is supposed to be November 30th of like this year, so. Like, the election was already cited at this point. I guess we'll see how he feels Before about we get started on this masterpiece, I'd like to take a moment and give a shout out to the sponsors of this episode. That's right, we got sponsored. Money, money, cash, y'all. So right now we're on the brink of total chaos if Biden gets elected. Or the press wants you to think such. Well, with a 52% tax like, like, hike, I'm I'm pretty scared as well. Okay, 52% tax hike. Let's, I mean, this is just, this is just completely untrue i think biden talked about increasing the tax rate, rates on the wealthiest but saying that like all oh, your wealth will be taxed to 52 percent is just like patently absurd like clearly that is not what's happening We're talking about increasing the tax rates on the richest people because uh trump gave them away give sorry trump gave them mountains of cash before we had a pandemic with this tax bill that's still in effect um so you know Making the rich people pay their fair share is a sentiment that most conservatives agree with. But if you tell conservatives that, like, oh, we're going to tax you at 52%, which, why the fuck would we? It makes no economic sense. And uh, liberals are nothing if not, not caring about having, like, some semblance of economic reasonability, uh, even if I disagree with them. And that's why there's Acre Gold. Invest in gold today. That way, a 52% tax hike can't I, ruin your credit. I can't even tell if there's a real advertisement. It's just as simple as subscribing, and you don't even have to pay all at once. You can pay as you go. Kind of like that Obamacare thing that, that didn't turn out so well. Thanks again, Biden. So make sure you check out the van down below. I don't even know what slap that is at the ACA. Well. Like, I'm going to invest in gold. Okay. Kind of, and so should you. This is about as far as I watched into the video already. But like, he just slapped me. There are two things. He's like, pay go, which is pay as you go, which is like a thing in the House of Representatives, if I remember correctly, where they're like, for each new increase in spending, we have to have an associated tax increase. And it's like, yeah, the ACA isn't running into like serious funding issues. Um, like, even when they got rid of that stupid fine, the fine wasn't necess a necessary funding mechanism, was it? It was supposed to, like, deter people and also provide funding. Like, it was supposed to deter people from not getting the insurance. I'm taking this guy seriously. He just clearly doesn't deserve it. He just slammed together two buzzwords, like, Pago, which I don't even know why you'd bring up Pago. I don't think Pago really had much to do with the ACA. Um, and they passed tax things associated with it. And the ACA is pretty popular. Like, that's the only thing we're going to look at. Let's see. 
what's the ACA approval rating? Let's see. Five charts about the opinion on the Affordable Care Act. Let's see. Uh, attitudes for the ACA are divided, somewhat more favorable than unfavorable since 2017. Favorable, 40 percent. Yeah, they increased. I mean, they've been they've been chilling. Like in the what's that, 55, 53 percent? Eh, that's pretty good. What's it? Don't know, refuse to. And like the disapproval is like 20 points lower. So like, what is he even on about? And that's with like constant propagandistic attacks by Republicans about how like I don't know, like death panels and how it's gonna fail and we can't pay for it in spite of it just being fine. That's actually the base of one of their Supreme Court challenges is like, um, sorry, one of the challenges they're trying to bring against the ACA, I think they went to the Supreme Court about um, saying like, well, we got rid of the uh, the mandate, therefore the whole thing should be struck down. It's like, okay, but it seems like it's fine because people are worried that that like when they when the Republicans remove the mandate with the tax bill, that like tons of people drop insurance and the whole thing would collapse. But like most people just kept their insurance because most people kind of want to have insurance. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. And my handy dandy producer is going to blend those colors across the bottom of the screen. We've got fake ballot blue. We've got oh Hunter Biden brown. And last but most certainly not least, we have the reemerging, most sought after and beloved orange. For even after all this time, orange glad that Hillary still isn't present. This is this is like incredible to me. Like this video came out four so we're just years go after Hillary Clinton brown. ran just for nice president, and there. it's like Russians. No one cares. Like no same. one, no one cares about Hillary Clinton. Nobody. No, one, no Democrats talk about her. We don't give a shit. Drop your obsession. She's living in, a, in the fucking woods in a cabin. Completely irrelevant. She was like an electoral delegate in New York alongside her husband. And it was irrelevant because uh, it's just a, a, a what's it called? A symbolic position for Democratic insiders. It didn't matter. And it won't matter. Types that want to um, his dad. But like, just can't let it go. And, you know, we got the conspiracy mongering about hunter biden all these things that have been proven not to be true um it's like you're not even talking about uh biden which you haven't even tied any of this shit to him it's just i don't even know why it's brown does it even it's hunter biden brown do they accuse him of like shitting on someone am i missing a joke here and then fake ballot blue because those blue democrats and their fake ballots aren't you glad that hillary still isn't president wonderful so we're just gonna go ahead and get started with this. So he's supposed to be like Brown. a feminist in here nice or something? Old Is that what they're saying? Let's see. Russians, Ukrainians, what was it called? all those same types that wanted to meet with his dad that he set up that meeting for. Yeah, Russian collusion for the last four years. But I love how we just blasted through this whole line about like the Russia collusion and the Ukrainian thing. Like, hey, the Russia thing, it was totally fake, in spite of there being overwhelming evidence to support that and a cacophony of like in indictments um, relating to the Russia thing. Uh, and the Ukraine thing being thoroughly investigated and like a, literally a set a Republican led Senate intelligence briefing by like that that jackass from uh, Wisconsin Ron I can't remember his name the senator from Wisconsin who's a Republican like confirmed like oh yeah um, Ron Johnson I think it's Ron Johnson uh, that Biden didn't do anything wrong <laughs> and had no He's evidence of it. Backyard. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Just repeating the go. same bullshit over and over again. Landscape. You keep saying it, people no, believe it. Just... I mean, that's the whole. That, that's literally this whole thing. Like, I'm just gonna repeat the same shit you've all heard a million times and call like Democrats hypocrites while just completely making shit up. Gentle strokes. Just gotta stroke it nice and slow. Just nice, slow, broad strokes, just like that. Now, of course, you don't want to stroke it too fast because well, that just ends really quickly, and you know, your, your girlfriend's left disappointed. Even if you tell her that that's never happened to you before. She doesn't believe you because she's been with lots of men. The only reason you're with her is because you have validation issues, and the fact that she's willing to touch your penis is just something you haven't had in a long time. We're just doing the incel appeal here. So now we've got our brown foundation. Or, or Ming Tao. Course, like, kind of reminds me of like the Democratic Like, oh, the only reason you're with her is because you have low self-esteem. Brown foundation of minorities and Never all these rich it. white liberals right on top of them, using them for everything they can. Oh, and it's the Democratic like plantation. On that mental plantation. Oh, <laughs> the Republicans that are racist. Moving on, they're still on that mental plantation. But it's the Republicans that are racist. The mental the Brown Foundation. <laughs> this is you saying it, rich white liberals right on top of them, using them for everything they can. Man, it's almost like they're still on that mental plantation. But it's the Republicans that are racist. This is like <laughs> I love these random zooms. That's the only part I kind of enjoy that. But like it's clearly just meant to like, I don't know. It's the only thing that comes close to being somewhat funny. Except for how wrong he is about everything. Like I love the mental plantation meme. Um, because it's like but you saying like, oh, they're just on that mental plantation. Like you're just saying they don't know what's good for them. Um, but it's like, what do Republicans do that are like good for the bl black and brown communities? Like you can just look at like the war on drugs was propagated by Republicans. Turning drug use into a moral panic. That was Republicans. Democrats eventually went along with it because it was such a rhetorically popular strategy. 
But, like, Nixon's the one who used uh, the war on drugs as a vehicle. Reagan put it on fucking crack. It's poor phrasing. Um, he cranked it up to 11. And then we found out crack existed. So, like, crack and the war on drugs don't even, like, align as a timeline. The war on drugs under Reagan was announced and perpetuated uh, years before crack even existed. So, um, and drug use was on the decline. Fun fact. Um, yeah, so it was, it was completely all fabricated as a moral panic. Um, and then used to destroy black and Americans. I know he makes, uh, I skimmed through parts of this before too. I know he's going to reference the Biden crime bill, which once again exists in that ecosystem of occurring after like nearly 30 years of the only non-Republican for like 30 years was, uh, like four years of Carter. He got fucking bounced on out of there. Moving on. After being conservative. All right. So next we're going to do some upward strokes. Nice and simplistic. It's complicated. Just some buildings. That's all they're going to be. Nice, happy little buildings. Well, yeah. Well. Wait, well, let's call it, uh, it's going to be buildings that they're going to be burning down. Happy for now, because here in a little bit, we're going to have some, uh, some unemployed Democrats come through and more than likely burn these suckers to the ground. Oh, boy. So, yeah, that's, that's what we want to do for black businesses out there. Nothing says support black small businesses like burning them to the ground. That just makes all the sense in the world to me. That's right. We support minorities. Like... He doesn't care about this, though. Like, no Republicans care about it. This is just like a hypocrisy. It's like, yeah, like, sometimes during riots, bad things happen. But these are not Democratic Party, like, riots and protests. Like, the BLM protests literally begun under Obama, the first black president, right? Like, this was this was always, like, an underlying issue that never got dealt with. Um, they don't specifically target black-owned businesses. That's just a byproduct of shit that sometimes happens. Um, and looting's not even that common. I mean, he's just, he's just perpetuating the, like... Oh, violent, violent Antifa memes here, like irrespective of like the evidence we know about the, the the scale of destruction in comparison to the scale of the protest. So by taking away their livelihood, mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense. Oh, if you're yeah. smoking crack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're just gonna go ahead and fill these brown buildings. I don't want to leave them all white and empty. Ironically, you got all that that whiteness in there. You you think Speaking you would like white, sort yeah. of understand Mitch that just like secured another position um, as a majority speaker. I got Mitch out. Got Mitch McConnell just secured another. Oh, is he doing that? that? Filling these brown buildings. You don't want to leave them all white and empty. Is he going to make Mitch McConnell? That so impressed. Speaking of white, you got Mitch McConnell just secured another position as majority speaker. No, we didn't. You got Mitch out there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we knew at this point. Biden's out there sniffing kids. You got Mitch out there sniffing coke, and Biden's out there sniffing kids. It's almost like it was just kind of meant to be. Just a whole lot of sniffing going on. Just sniff away those troubles. I f sniff away yourself. Right I feel like I'm missing out. like a QAnon thing. We here. have all these buildings here, but nobody's in them because of the whole COVID lockdown. Because you know we have to protect everybody, but uh, destroy their livelihoods at the same time. Kind of like the whole uh, we have to shut down mom and pop businesses because apparently that would spread COVID more. So instead, we leave major corporations like Amazon and Target, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. They can stay open because funneling everybody into bigger stores is a whole lot safer and less likely to get COVID. Than let's let's get through the list of things. You funneling said. everybody into bigger stores is a whole lot. Target, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, they can stay open because... He just identified core businesses. Walmart sells, like, everything, including groceries, which is a core business. Um, Lowe's is a core business because it's for construction and responding to emergencies and stuff like that. You need that type of infrastructure. He named literally all, like, core businesses. Like, if you're a small business that was, like, a construction store or, like, a local grocery store, you would have not been forced to close down either. Um I mean, this is one thing that's like half true. It's like, yeah, um, it's like the, the lockdowns are bad but only because we half did them, which has prolonged the suffering and the pain and the badness. So it's like, I have to get what he's saying here, but like, is he, he's just attributing this all to like democratic cities doing lockdowns, right? Kind of like the whole, uh, we have to shut down mom and pop business, but uh, destroy their livelihoods at the same time. Kind of like the whole, uh, we have to shut down mom and pop businesses because apparently that would spread COVID more. So instead, we leave major corporations like Amazon and Target, yeah, this is, Lowe's, This is Home literally Depot, like a Republican Walmart. thing, too. Though. They can stay open because funneling everybody into bigger stores is a whole lot safer and less likely to get COVID than letting... Well, it's like you don't need to go to, like, the mom and pop, like, like, like uh, I don't know, uh, like, restaurant or... Actually, I think restaurants were even open. I don't think restaurants were... Did, were restaurants closed down? I think they were closed down for inside you. Or restaurants closed during COVID. I, I don't think they were. Yeah, these certain institutions were closed permanently or long term. I think that's just a byproduct of people just not wanting to go outside, though, and not being able to eat indoors and having limits. But I'm I'm like ninety percent sure when we were at like the height of lockdowns here, I could still go to restaurants and pick up food because I'm pretty sure I did. But it's like you'd either sit in your car and they'd like bring it out, or like you'd walk in quickly, you get your food and leave, or they'd have like a like a door. Like I went to some places that had like their their front door 
was just turned into like a pickup window. It's pretty cool. So I, I, I don't know what he's talking about here. This is just not entirely true. It's like, yeah, people are hurting, but like the reason they're hurting is because Republicans are refusing to pass bills to help local governments and refusing to do like long-term aid. Like uh, Bernie Sanders pushed for that amendment in the beginning or amendment. I don't know if it's fair to call it amendment. Basically pushed to get like, like add $600 to unemployment, which was good. It was good for a lot of people, helped out a lot of people. And Republicans were trying to shoot it down. And he's just like, I'll stall this whole fucking bill. Um, and then eventually when they got the chance, they gutted that from 600 to 300. So they're like, oh, you people aren't going to want to go back to work. But, but who actually cares about like the well-being of these people? The ones who are trying to make them not work so we don't continue perpetuating a pandemic and we're trying to give them some degree of aid versus the other side who is like, you can't have nice things. These people need to go back to work during a pandemic. Like, who's the real person fucking with them? Like, it's just stupid. Um, and Democrats are plenty shitty. But, like, you have, like, the shittiness within Democrats and the good within Democrats and then every single Republican hiding for the worst thing at all times. Like, like Trump right now, I mean, obviously this video is, like, a month old, so you can't know this, but... Um, like, Trump had this instinct to, like, give people more money. Uh, incredible. If he just, like, literally did this in the beginning, we'd be have four more years of Trump now. But he's a fucking moron who just follows those around him straight to a second to a defeat and losing an incumbency, even though it hasn't happened since... Uh, fuck, I guess you say H.W. Bush. But I think that's even complicated because it was a three-way race, but whatever. Um, so that happened. But, like, now he's like, oh, I want $2,000 a month for people, or I'm not signing your bill. And Democrats are like, hell yeah, dude. Well, well, Nancy Pelosi is like, I'll write that bill right now. Like, hey, what do you know? Democrats want to work with Trump. So Republicans don't want to do that, and they don't want to give people lots more money. Initially, I thought they were talking about 1200 and they finally announced it was like 600 I'm like, 600 fucking dollars? It's been nine fucking months. You're going to give people 600 fucking dollars? Like, all right, maybe I'll stave off some people from like getting kicked out of their house January 1st. But, I mean, even $2,000 might just do that for more people. But, I mean, it's a little bit more of a cushion. The average rent's probably like, I don't know, what, like 1000 bucks a month or something like that? On the pop uh, shops, well, they'll kind of disperse. Well, like, you, you can't genuinely even pretend to care about this, right? <laughs> what do I know? I'm not a virologist. I don't even know if that's a word. I just know I don't have COVID. I think. Who knows anymore? The tests aren't even accurate. Moving on. I know to go ahead and pop open. Oh, yeah, you know, the reason that tests weren't accurate, and it's not entirely true. I think the active tests are accurate. Um, and there was a point where, like, the antibody tests were really inaccurate but it's because they just removed all restrictions on it so they just used them as like a, a dousing rod basically like they had all these like tests these antibody tests that just were like they just spit out a random thing that horrible error rates but it's because of like a lack of uh, regulation and just letting like anyone make a fucking antibody test which is which is bad because if they, i don't remember the false positive rate but yeah it was, it was there were two tests there was an antibody test and the virus test right the virus test tells you if you currently have the antibody test tells you if you had it in the past and uh it was the ones I told you if you previously had it that were bad. Oh, missing ballot blue and squirt that blueness all over there. Oh, it's a lot of blue. There we go. Missing ballot blue? Squirt that blueness all over there. Oh, it's a lot of blue. There we go. Who knows anymore? The tests aren't even accurate. Wasn't it a different Moving thing on. before? What did you call it? Go ahead and pop open our missing ballot blue and it's fake squirt ballot that blue. blueness all Come over there. Come on now. Oh, Stay consistent. Genius. It's only like three minutes since you made that joke. Yeah. Mix this blue up. And speaking of blue up, how'd that city of Chaz work out? All those overweight, blue-haired, hairy lesbians pooping in trash cans. And He's still obsessed out. with like 2014 memes. Didn't work out so well. What? Hairy lesbian. And speaking of blue up, how'd that city of Chaz work out? All those overweight, blue-haired, hairy lesbians pooping in trash cans and singing kumbaya. That didn't work out so well for you. When people started bringing guns in and forming gangs and. Well, it pretty much sounds like every Democrat city out there. Oh wow. Oh. Weird. So we're just gonna go ahead and do some broad strokes to create a nice blue skyline. There's like, there's like a, I always love like, I'm just gonna point out random facts, it's kind of weird, right? And like, what he's trying to do with that is appeal to like a sense of intuition, right? Like, oh, these, these democratic cities are just a hellscape of crime and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, okay, and the cities, they're, they're like the good place, right? Um, I don't wanna use the F word, but like, and, and when you're doing like, like narrative, like world building, you wanna like demonize cities and democratic strongholds in this respect, like that's what always what they're gonna do, irrespective of it's true. Now there are reasons why there are more gangs in cities, and it's about like population density, um, in large part, and you know poverty that's endemic to cities. And there's 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 ways you can talk about that, like and have interesting conversations about the failures of you know it's it's federal, state, and local governments. Honestly, it's 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 very complicated. But like the goal here is not to have like a nuanced conversation, right? Like he's just gonna like 
trash these cities about like these poor black gangsters and that's what he's having fun doing so far be it just from, nice far be it from us oh, we're just gonna flood this canvas with blue all kinds of blue numbers going everywhere and spiking in the middle of the night just for no reason at all I just yeah that, that's already been addressed way before this video even came out like the election was on eight, the 8th and they're talking about a spike that happened on the 9th and it was literally just on decision desk i think um hold on let's see i think it was michigan ballot no it was wisconsin ballot 130k more votes biden overnight let's see we're not given a biting let's see overnight vote spike there we go Let's see if I, I think I might have combined two things on this screen. The razor thin margin, dozens of misleading claims. It can run from the website. More rest your voters than ballot. Oh, that was a fun one too. Jumps caused by pulled Milwaukee returns. The increase in the charge simply shows when the city of Milwaukee reported its absentee ballot results. We knew well before the election that that's literally all it was. Wasn't it supposed to be like it was 100 and uh, Milwaukee reported all at the same time? The votes were reported together because Milwaukee and 38. So they just, let's see. Oh, so it wasn't even what I thought it was. I think the decision desk or something might have reported. I think it was decision desk. I think it was this because that time frame seems about right. Uh, so it's the night after election day, and it was like Biden jumped by 130k votes or 120,000 votes, which is this, which is just Biden capturing a huge share of the absentee votes from Milwaukee, a heavily Democratic leaning city, and also a medium that heavily leans Democrat. So it's like, yeah, no shit, he won this. We knew this was going to happen. And when the brain knew this was gonna happen, so yeah, he's just he's just lying again. All right, fake ballot blue spiking all over the place. Like this this was crazy to me, right? Like I don't know, maybe Fluff will watch this. Who knows? And uh, what's trying to say? Like we knew this was going to happen. Were we just like pre-planting the seeds? We're like, oh yeah, we know that Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, their state legislators are controlled by Republicans, refuse to allow early counting. And then Republicans, like Trump, literally telegraphed that, oh, I'm going to claim like whatever the results on election night are, I'm going to win. And the only way that wasn't going to lead to this outcome was if Biden won like Florida, North Carolina. I guess it would just be Florida. If he won Florida, North Carolina, I think he would have just walked away with it the night of because they had quick voting procedures. But this was just a this is a the, the, the slow voting was literally just a state level decision by Republicans not to let early voting happen or happen on time. Like I live in Florida. We knew our election results like 98 percent or something night of it's good it's a good system Florida system good you know except for all the black people we don't let vote that's a different topic though um but yeah like this was this was literally all known of course this should know. not have been surprised yes. trump told his people not to vote by absentee ballot to vote in person so yeah when you tell them not to do absentee balloting you tell them to vote early or vote in person on day of then we know those things are going to skew very heavily in one direction this is the least surprising thing in the history of the world Say that this election was the most secure election it was impossible for voter fraud or voter tampering but for the last four years they've been saying russians were colluding with trump and so these are like two different claims this is fun he's just slamming these together right um so saying that there's widespread voter fraud right every year there's gonna be a handful of maybe like voter fraud uh and voter fraud and election fraud are not the same thing they throw those together election fraud would be like if you manipulated uh ballots or the system in, in some meaningful way usually it's like a campaign or a clerk or something like would be doing that that's pretty rare i think the only case we really had recently was uh one of the north carolina house seats there was like election fraud committed by a republican um funny how that works um and they ended up redoing the election and they found out about it pretty quickly to where the election results weren't even certified so like the one time we know recently of it happening we found out about it very quickly and the, the election results were not certified um and what was the other thing let's say oh and like voter fraud like yeah there's like a hand like i'll never say there's no voter fraud i'll say there's no significant voter fraud because there's like i don't know what a dozen cases out of like a dozen cases probably tops out of like 330 million votes or on 120 million votes cast no it's like ish it's more this time i think it's 160 million votes cast and you're gonna tell me like at most is what a dozen case of, cases of voter fraud which is usually like accidental and everything else they say is just completely made up uh, and then comparing it to the russian thing it's like yeah no one ever said the russians like mailed in ballots for donald trump that was never the claim the claim was that they uh used i think it was it was a couple of things one the republicans sorry uh the russians worked with the trump campaign to feed them information and coordinate uh leaks of information with trump's like campaign which they did um that's proven uh yeah yeah that's proven it was like julian assange with wikileaks on be at behest of the russians 
Like, or I shouldn't say, fuck, I don't know if it was Julian Assange or it was just Wicked. I don't know to what extent he was involved with it specifically, but yeah, it was like, the, he hates like he hates Hillary Clinton like, so much, so who knows? Enemy of enemies, my friend, maybe is what he went with it. But anyway, um, uh, what was it? Trump, uh, his campaign received that information in coordination with like uh, Julian Assange, Russians, WikiLeaks, something like that. They're all intercommingled uh, for this and uh, coordinated the release of that information. Yes, you worked with Russians to do that. That's highly unethical um, and probably illegal. Uh, but it was very hard to prove because of all the obstruction of justice. Um, but they came pretty close. Whatever. Um, let's see. And the other thing was, yeah, no one accused them of changing votes for me for anything. It was like you, they did one, a propaganda campaign online, like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, stuff like that, um, which is pretty successful. You don't need to invest tons of money. If you invested like $5 million into that, or I think, I think it was like a few million dollars that they invested into that scheme. But it's like they're just paying people to sit in a, to sit in a room, use bot accounts to like create propaganda, like discouraging Democratic voters or propaganda propping up Trump or making fun of Hillary Clinton and they just spam upvote it with like their hundreds of other accounts giving it like kind of like starting the snowball and then hopefully there'll be people latching onto it it's like yeah they did that we know they did that 110 percent we know they did that and that's annoying and that's what people are talking about yes Russians interfered in our election we interfere in other people's elections too but uh, it doesn't mean we want them to interfere in ours and I don't think we shouldn't interfere in theirs anyway but topic for a different time I suppose so it's like all very silly um yeah so it, it's like it's like completely different claims but it's like it's like superficially if you just step back you're like well they're saying that like there was some fraud or interference and like that time they, they were saying it happened and like they're basically the same and it's like they're not remotely the same hence why one is viable and proven and the other one is not viable and not proven like that's the difference here one is based in reality and like and like evidence that we've observed over time recorded and conducted investigations that resulted in many prosecutions and uh indictments and uh you know what's it called uh, all the intelligence agencies at our disposal uh who even worked for donald trump uh who he elected their their heads to, into uh confirming that the russians interfered in our election yeah we knew this yeah. and then, like this completely untrue. yada 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 I just wish they'd make up their mind. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I love how it's yeah, like we didn't make up so our deep, mind. Then. Even Ted Kennedy could crash into the car and that with Hooker in the trunk and they still wouldn't find it. That's a deep swamp. Oh, you pesky Democrats. Hookers and penises and not knowing what the hell you are. And by the way, there's still only two genders. I felt a disturbance in the force, as if millions of overweight, blue-haired lesbians all screamed out at once, wishing for my death. Oh, well. And lastly, but most certainly not least, we're going to be pushing out our orange and glad Hillary's still not your president. Folks, no matter how bad it can get in the future, even if Joe Biden wins, just remember, Hillary's still <laughs> Joe Biden not president. <laughs> that makes children across what, the Look at this came out. Like, look at he, already, he already won. <laughs> we're going to make nice broad strokes coming up. That's right. Hey, I want to... Even if Joe Biden wins, still not your president. But most certainly not least... Blue-haired lesbians, all I all you are. And by the way, there's just a random slight of gender, like hookers and penises. Just doesn't make sense. Deep swamp. Right. So deep that Ted, I don't think Ted Kennedy had a hooker in his gender. car. I'm pretty sure that's just a conspiracy thing. Ted Kennedy was a horrible person, and he killed someone. Hold on, Ted Kennedy. This is just like random, like bullshit. I'm pretty sure. But it wasn't he had a hooker in his car. I'm pretty sure he just was like drunk driving and killed somebody. Right? Death, reactions, funeral, current. Where is it? Family and early career, United States Senator, brother's assassination, car, car killed, aides were killed, pilot Edward Moss, no, chaos, no, god, their family just dies so fucking much, Ted Kennedy, car, how's this not his Wikipedia page, Chappaquiddick incident, okay, was a single vehicle crash that occurred on Sometime around midnight. Crash caused Senator Kennedy's negligence resulting in the death of his 28-year-old passenger, Mary Jo Kepachi, who was trapped inside the vehicle. When he just, like, flipped into the causeway or something, he maintained his intent was to immediately take to a ferry landing and return to Edgartown. Like, let's see. So I guess they're postulating that she was not just an aide for, like, his brother's campaign and, like, a political known as the Boiler Room Girls. 
There were, there were six women who worked as political advisors to Robert Kennedy. So they're postulating that this person who was part of a political campaign and like an advisor to Robert Kennedy was actually just a prostitute. Is that what like, is that, I, I guess that's what the conspiracy here is. I've never even heard that one before, but I mean, I'm not surprised, right? Uh, I mean, they're insane. I've left the party. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a dickhead and like let this girl die. But like, yeah, we can, we can make fun of Ted Kennedy, but like, why are we, why are we just lying about him? Like killing some girls? <laughs> I felt a disturbance in the fort. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. You made a stupid gender future. joke. It wasn't funny. And that makes children across the world really happy. Looking at you, Epstein Island. We're gonna. What? And that makes children. Biden wins. Just remember, folks, no matter how bad it can get in the future, even if Joe Biden wins, just remember, Hillary is still not the president. True. And that makes children across the world really happy. Looking at you, Epstein Island. We're gonna make nice broad strokes coming Like out. it's the Hillary Clinton Epstein link, like. And just completely neglecting like Trump's associations with Epstein. He's like literally on tape saying like, oh, we both like him young uh, at like a party with Epstein. And like his associations with them is and like wishing Ghislaine Maxwell like, oh, I hope her trial goes super well. It's like, what? She's a child trafficker. What are you doing? <laughs> Ignoring this dude's like completely like freaky associations with like ch like the whole Epstein Island thing. Like, all right, whatever. That's right. Fuck it. We're okay. We're just playing blind partisan bullshit, businesses. right? from white liberals burning them just because of trump hate a man so much that you burn down the very same people that your party oppressed for generations and trump what? those minority owned businesses from white liberals burning them just because of trump i love how he just keeps engaging it's like it's minority owned businesses being burned to the ground because donald trump and it's like no th these protests were not like really about donald trump this is police brutality they were not against donald trump the blm protests they were like police brutality and then trump chose to like double into the law and order narrative because it like it's supposed to I'm still very confused too. Like it didn't work the way I thought it was supposed to work. So I don't know. I'm, I'm I'd be I'd be curious to post election like analyses and like hearing a good argument like one way or the other about like what the effects of that rhetoric were because you'd think it was supposed to like drive more white voters towards him, but he actually did better with minorities this election than he did the last one the last time I checked, and he did worse among white voters. And it's like, well, the the law and order narrative is supposed to like be a hardcore dog whistle for like white people to get like really scared about like their suburban vacation homes being like taken away or whatever uh i'm memeing but that's an actual thing like i appreciate sure you said like oh they're gonna the maoris are gonna come and they're gonna like break into your vacation homes on lake michigan or whatever the fuck it was it's really ridiculous um hate a man so much that you burn down the very same people that your party oppressed for generations and now claims to want to thrive i thought it was, like He's done this like three times now. I don't think I really addressed it, but he's just like ignoring like the the, the party switch and the demographics shifts and like the the history of like black people and like the parties they vote for is pretty interesting in this country. And like I don't know, it, it's interesting to look into and like understand like how these political movements have like coalesced over time. Uh, but like he, clearly, he's uninterested in like actually like looking into that and understanding the like history there because it's actually it's really interesting because it was like re like Northern Republicans. So here's the important part. part. These, these things are more regional than they are partisan. Um, the, the the racial dog whistling was effective in both regions, but the, the extreme like racial hostilities were usually way more present in the South than the North for obvious Civil War related reasons. And um, and like if we look at like who was the party in the North during the Civil War and who's the party in the North now, you have your answer. Like Abraham Lincoln led the Union, which was Republicans against the South. Who are Democrats? And uh, okay, I guess I'm gonna do a quick history of this. Uh, it's a TLDR, so forgive me if anyone's history buffs here. Um, the Northern Republicans waged the Civil War against the Southern Democrats. After, well, I shouldn't even say it that way. That's kind of like ahistorical because the the South is the ones who seceded because they're mad about like the slavery shenanigans and whatever. And um, oh, sorry, states' rights. And uh, then over time, when we let them back in, restructure, reconstruction ended, and we had like the resurgence, the, the the surgeons, and then the resurgence of the KKK in the nineteen or sorry eighteen eighties and nineties, and then they resurged back in like the nineteen twenties, if I remember correctly. Um, and during this time, like Democrats or sorry Republican vo or Black voters, there we go, were split, leaning pretty hard towards the Republican Party. I think it was like 60, 70 percent. But the, the issue was that, like, the, the, the reasons that Republicans were opposed to slavery was, like, very ideologically 
derived from the Enlightenment, which is not devoid of its racism. Like, they didn't think that, like, black people were, like, people and equal to the white man necessarily. Like, it wasn't, like, the way we kind of, like, view it today during this, like, egalitarian framework. It was sort of like, you know, even the lesser beings don't deserve to be oppressed and mistreated in such a way. We should have a very paternalistic view, not like a subject, uh, like a, I don't want to say subject, I don't know what the word, like, like a, like a, like a dominant relationship, more of like a paternal one. Um, it was sort of like the, their viewpoint. Um, and, and like even like like when they were doing like slave and free states, like the I'm trying to remember this, this Mississippi and Kansas. Like the reason why Kansas people didn't want wait, it was Kansas. I think it was Kansas didn't want slavery, not because like oh slavery bad, it's because a whole bunch of poor white people went out to Kansas to get like property to like start their lives and like or to like you know get an advantage where like you're going out to here, the federal government's giving you free land, but like if you make slave holding legal there, well, then slaveholders can come there, use their capital they have from already having slaves and plantations and shit, start businesses, and they can outcompete your small family farm. So like, yeah, the poor white people who went there were opposed to slavery, maybe for moral reasons, but also just for their own economic reasons. Like, fuck you, I came out here, they gave me 100 acres, 200,000 acres, I don't, I don't know how large the average farm is anymore. Um, give them however many hundreds of thousands of acres and said you can just have it your job is to maintain the land become a farmer do whatever and then went out there to do that and like yeah i'm not gonna let fucking slavers come here and like buy up all this land or take free land and then drag slaves here and undermine my ability to compete because like you know you only got you only got two hands and if someone can roll up with like 100 slaves like you probably wouldn't compete as well um but yeah so the, the democratic party was perceived as like the by black people this is expressed by like nlk i think because he was an independent voter but he voted for lyndon b johnson if i remember correctly and his argument was like the republican party is like cares about those individual rights but they're not the party of the working class and he said like we need the party of the working class and the democrats for all their faults for the party of the working class so there's this really weird coalition that formed the democratic party like through the 19 i think 30s 40s 50s and to the 60s and 70s obviously still now that um that united like like the democratic south with black voters to make them a very powerful force because you had you know the historical like hatred of republicans because republicans are the ones who destroyed the south like the, with the civil war right like no no southerner would like vote for a fucking republican because of that and uh the democrats were kind of split or sorry the black, black voters were largely split between the two and then they um they eventually started moving over to the democratic party when you had people like fdr coming to power who were populist in nature and who they're like, listen, there's only one party who actually gives a shit about our well-being. Like, what point is there in giving someone uh, social freedom, social liberation, if they're still economically enslaved? Um, that was the crux of, like, Martin MLK's, like, arguments. And it's like, yeah, it resonates with me, I guess. It probably resonates with a whole lot of people. And so black people moved over to the civil, uh, sorry, black people largely moved over to the Democratic Party to where it is today. Um, and uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, when he signed the Civil Rights Act, he's like, we just lost the South for a generation. And he was wrong. It was longer than a generation because right when Lyndon B. Johnson did that, the Republicans under Nixon, I think, I think Kennedy, John F. Kennedy ran against Nixon um, and beat him. Um, and then Nixon ended up running in the next election cycle after, oh, sorry, two election cycles. Because Lyndon B. Johnson ran against uh, Barry Goldwater. And Barry Goldwater sort of pioneered the Southern strategy where he like appealed to those like, conservative and racialized sentiments to try and drag uh former democratic voters who were like you know uh i don't want to say just racist but like racist and also just having these these innate biases bringing them to the republican party under the veil of conservatism which they did successfully and as a result like yeah you have the republican party who was not pro-worker still isn't pro-worker and also are now trying to appeal to uh anti-black sentiment that's generally felt across the united states so yeah, they ran away from them. I don't know why I'm responding to this, but but yeah, so that's eventually how the political machinations congealed to where they are more or less today. Um, and Republic, De Democrats tend to just get, uh, sorry, black people tend to vote very heavily Democrat because like, what does the Republican party offer them? Like they initially made that the amends with the Democratic party. Cause like, hey, you do some racism and like you got that, that little checkered pass with the whole like, you know, KKK and the South, but yeah, hey, you're the only one who wants to give us jobs and help the economy and whatever so well we'll endure but like <laughs> it's funny like he painted earlier that like black people are just really dumb they're on the, the mental plantation and it's like this is like a very strategic group of voters if you think about it like the fact you can be like yeah sure like the democratic party is like super racist and they had us enslaved like 80 years ago but like we need jobs now not just freedom we got the freedom so 
let's just join that that coalition and see what we can do. And that's what they did. And then they eventually turned the Democratic Party into, you know, what it is today, I guess, for better or worse. Um, and they still do it. Like, you deal with idiots like Joe Biden saying, like, I'm the only white boy who talked about Charlottesville. Uh, that was a recent thing he said to, was it that? Was it just black civil rights leaders or something or black leaders? I, I don't remember. It was just a whole it was a Zoom call with like nine black people and Joe Biden in the middle, like the fucking Brady Bush thing sort of. Joe Biden's in the middle. He's he's like, listen, I'm going to respond to your criticism, but uh, just seeing I'm the only white boy who uh, wanted to restore the soul of this country and like all this dumb shit he just starts saying. It's like, bro. Like, but, but keep in mind, like, people knew this. They voted for Joe Biden because they're just like, yo, man, the devil, the devil you know. Like, oh, not just the devil you know, but like, the other guy's a complete shithead and a moron. So like, We'll look past you being a complete fucking clown and incompetent. Because, like, you know, that's what we got to do. You're out there burning it all down. Because black lives and black businesses clearly matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless... I've already addressed this. I'm not, I'm not talking about this anymore. Years, you're out there wanting to rename city streets and tear down Confederate statues because of racism and the South and the Confederate flag. Yet, you turn around and you elect a man whose 1994 bill helped put more minorities in prison than crack cocaine itself did. Yeah, complicated. Also support a VP that Who started those initial, initial war and drugs? Black 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 who did it? How could we know? How could black. we know if we just don't read history books? Oh, oh. no, I've gone cross-eyed. So now we have our what, hand. What made him go cross-eyed? By keeping lots of black men in prison and utilizing for cheap manual labor. Oh, no, I've gone cross-eyed. Huh. But who so did it? How could we know? Finished? How could we Again, know? Did Joe Biden just pass that crime bill in a vacuum? Young, How could we know? Town, burned down. By white liberals. This is the Democratic Party. Let's pick ourselves up a little bit of higher tax rates from Democrats. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. And there you have it. The true sign of tyranny. It was never about a mask. And now you're being conditioned to think that promoting liberty and freedom. This guy's actually just fucking insane, huh? Comes to my life. I don't know what I was expecting here. Versus your life. <laughs> the Constitution says that what? I have to give a damn. What does he do? I don't. This is socialism. The John this Burke. Can I bully him? Maybe? I'm this not responsible for you. Baseball, you too, right? And you're not responsible for me. Open America and let's go back to work. So this is like... <laughs> just being super racist this whole time. Just, just doesn't even care. And just wrong about everything. And then... I like how he just was trying to look retarded before, but unironically just looks retarded here while talking about how like... I'm not responsible for you, and you're not responsible for me. It's like, like they, he has to have come across the whole, like, the mask protects other people, not yourself thing, right? Like, this is so fucking known at this point. Like, you have to be oblivious. And, like, understanding that, like, a pandemic only gets controlled by, like, groups responding and changing their behavior together. You can't have one group getting infected and just being retarded. And the other group just be unaffected while they're inhabiting the same geographical space. Like, this does not work out like that. This <laughs> is just, ugh, whatever. Um, and you're not responsible for me. Oh wow! Open America, and let's go. So we, we did. Let's say, I guess he is he just a libertarian? Is that Back all? Back to work. And if you're scared, mm -hmm. stay home. Welcome to freedom. This is just like far right insanity, like masquerading as freedom. Uh, that's all. I, that's kind of what I got from this, because like, I don't think he really said anything that like. I, I guess he did the ACA, the Pago thing, um, which doesn't really make sense because it's not the ACA. It's really causing us economic issues um let's see I'm trying to remember there wasn't a whole lot of libertarian memes in here but he just chose to end on the my freedom i don't know it kind of reminds me of like the paxton the paxton quote right uh for those unfamiliar let's see oh fuck let's see paxton freedom paxton fascism in america a debate over the world. Come on. Let's see. Robin. Five stages of fascism. American flag. All right, I'm gonna paraphrase the quote. Basically, like the the just the just the quote. Uh, Paxton wrote a book called The Anatomy of Fascism. It's a great book. Recommend. Oh, that's funny. I read both of these books. I actually have that one queued up too. Huh. I've never even read this article before. Interesting. These are all great books, though. I mean, I haven't read On Tyranny, but How Fascism Works is fantastic. Anatomy of Fascism is fantastic. I read Stanley's other book and that one. I'm pretty sure I have that queued up. Anyway, um, wait. American flag. Fascism. Reich, Robert Reich. 
Whatever. Okay, fuck it. We're just going to paraphrase it. So basically, just the quote was like, if you're expecting the aesthetics of fascism, like you're expecting like World War II Nazis, like if you're expecting like jackbooted thugs and like Hitler mustaches and like KKK flags, and, or, sorry, not KKK flags, uh, Nazi flags, and like the, the SS, and for them to be speaking German, like no, like fascism's the 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 specific aesthetics like that of fascism are not um, like universal. Um, you're not going to have a swastika in America. Well. Okay, that's, that would be wrong because we do have some of our neo Nazis who do run around with swastikas. But, but like a widespread accepted version of like American fascism would not be like embroidered with swastikas and zig heiling through the street, right? Um, you would you would have something that's 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 embraced in that or sorry baptized. You'd have a fascism that's baptized in American culture, basically. Like, like there's a reason why fascism, the symbol of the fasci, uh, the fasci, the fascists, right? This is the yeah, so this is a symbol from like like Rome or something, right? Italian, it's Italian word. This is where the term fascism comes from because that was the symbol of like Mussolini's fascism. Uh, a bundle of wooden rods, sometimes including an axe with its blade emerging. So it's like the sticks hold the rod together, which creates makes a more powerful um, thing. But this this is from like let's say Republican Republic of Rome, right? So this is what the this is what like Mussolini was attempting to like appeal appeal towards, right? We're going to be like the rebirth of like the Holy Roman Empire. We're going to be like we're going to rise up again and make ourselves make make Italy great again, basically, and adopted this symbolism. Uh, of the fasci, which represents the the might of like the Holy Roman Empire uh, that existed 1600 years prior or whatever. Forgive me if I was wrong in the exact years. Ancient Rome. Oh fuck, I'm totally wrong, aren't I? Okay, that, that wasn't. I, I was pretty close. I said 1600 years. I, I fall within the range. I just didn't catch the whole thing. Uh, is ancient Rome the same as the Holy Roman Empire? Okay, not crossing that bridge right now. Um, but like you'd have it wrapped in the American flag using the language of freedom and like all these other things where like you, you pay lip service to freedom, but you don't mean freedom in like the conventional way it's understood. You're just appealing to this, this Americanized like idealism, um, but pitching these, these like fascist ideas. Um, and like, that's sort of what we're, we're seeing there, right? Like, Oh, don't wear a mask. Like masks are slavery. This mask doesn't work. Like all this shit. Right. And it's like, like we we know they work. How is it patriotic to do this? Oh, this is this is hashtag resistance. I'm not gonna wear a mask at a fucking Walmart. Like get the fuck out of here. Just being a dumbass. Um. Uh. But yeah. So like like in Italian fascism, you know, they had the fasci, and here they had uh, some type of like like paganism and armbands, and you know, uh, returning the to to its glory before the uh, Treaty of Versailles fucked them over when they were like a powerful force in Europe. They were wronged by like the Jewish insiders. The only reason they lost, you know. Um, but th there's no reason to think we would have this aesthetic for like American Nazism or this aesthetic for American Nazism. There's, there's no reason to think any of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's sort of the point, right? Like if you if you, if the only mesh, if you're only like way to evaluate fascism is through like a historical lens while not fundamentally understanding the nature of those movements. Yeah. You're not going to be able to see fascism or like the, burgeoning fascist movements in a given country at a given point in time because they're never going to look this, exactly the same as other um, fascist movements, at least in terms of like the aesthetic, because the aesthetic is different based on the cultures it's trying to arise in. That's the end of my TED Talk. I guess I've used it a lot. I've used the TED Talk line a lot recently. All right, we're going we're gonna to outro this and be done, though. Peace. <laughs>